Hello guys, welcome back to the Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the shear reinforcement and beam. Shear reinforcement is also called as the transverse reinforcement and in the case of beams they are called as stirrups, while in case of column they are called as ties. And the main purpose of the shear reinforcement is provide the to provide the resistance to the shear forces. So now sometimes we see that the the, the spacing of the stirrups is different along the whole length. Sometimes they are provided at a smaller distance, while at some point they are provided at the higher spacing. So we will cover that why the shear reinforcement spacing changes along the length of the beam. So let's consider this is a simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load acting on this beam. So there are two support reactions. The one is here and one is here the whole load will be taken by these two supports. Now to draw the shear force, I will draw the reference line. So now to draw the shear force, I can make it 0, 0, is there are the reference line. So now this load is acting upward, so the shear force will start from here in upward direction, and then this load is acting downward, which is uniformly distributed load. So this load will try to make the shear force in a downward direction, and here it will be zero at the midpoint of the beam, the shear force will become zero. And then it will again move downward due to this load down here. And this point it will be maximum again at this end because of the support reactions. So we see here that the shear force is maximum at this end of the beam and also at this end of the beam. The shear force are maximum because the two support reactions are there due to these two support reactions the shear forces are maximum for example let's consider this is any object and this is a force acting on at this point and the another force is acting in opposite direction at this point so due to these forces the object will try to slide and some stresses are created created inside this object we call it the shear stresses so due to these forces acting in the opposite direction, they will try to slide the object. So similar in this case, due to this force acting in the upward direction, while this force is acting downward direction, so they will create some stresses, which we call as the shear stresses. As we go into this side, so the support reaction, the support reaction dominancy is less as compared to this point. That's why the shear forces are lesser at this point. The more near to the support reaction, the more resistance provided at this support. So due to which the highest shear stress is created. So as you go away from the beam, from the, this point of the beam, the lesser will be the shear stresses. And due to which at the midpoint, there is no support reactions. So due to which the only load acting is the downward load, which doesn't create any shear stresses. Because for shear stresses, there are two necessary forces acting in opposite direction at different points. One is this one and one is this one. But here at this point, there is no upward force due to which there is no shear stress. So this is why the shear force is zero at this point, while the maximum force here at this point. So if we draw the shear force diagram, if we draw the reinforcement detail for this beam, so it will look like this. This is the beam. Now to place the shear reinforcement, so due to this high due to this high demand of shear at this point and also at this point of the beam, there is a high shear demand. So the reinforcement, the shear reinforcement or the stirrups will be at a, at a smaller distance. While at this point, after this point, there is no such high demand of the shear force. So we can provide this spacing of the stirrups high as compared to the in points. Again, there is a high demand, so we provide the less spacing of the stirrups. You see here, the distance between this stirrups is D and this stirrup is D. So the D is greater than the smaller D because there is no such high demand of the shear forces, so we don't need to provide such smaller distance of the stirrups. So this is the economical design of the beam in which we provide the reinforcement at a smaller distance at the ends, while the higher spacing of the stirrups at the midpoint of the beam where there is no such shear stresses. Similar is the case of the three-point support beam. As with the three-point support, support point beam, 
So due to the load acting on this beam, there will be some stresses here like in this case, in this way. So the reinforcement for this case will be like, so at this support the shear forces are high, at this support the shear forces are high and at this support the shear forces are high. So you can provide the reinforcement at a smaller distance at this point, at this point you can provide the reinforcement at a smaller distance and similarly at this point you can provide the reinforcement at a smaller distance while in the middle you can just provide the spacing at a normal distance which is not smaller as compared to the end points. So this is the way of distributing the strips along the length of the beam. Smaller distance at those points where the demand is high and large distance or the high spacing of the strips where there is a low demand of the shear force. So depending on the shear force, you can provide the shear reinforcement. The shear reinforcement in beams and columns is totally dependent on the demand of the shear force. Hope you guys understand the basic knowledge of the shear reinforcement that why we provide the shear reinforcement at a smaller spacing sometimes and we and somewhere we provide the high distance of the strips. For DD7 engineering video, don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you for watching our video.